Welcome to Science Zone, BBC Education's science strand for the 10 to 13 age group. The aim of the series is to show science at work in the wider world. Programs are based on key curriculum themes and use special information zones to help highlight and explain key concepts. Tonight's unit looks at people, types of material and changing materials. Right, all I've been told is to stand at this bus stop and await further instructions. Spooky. Oh, you alright? Oh, oh dear. Hello, you alright? You alright? Right? You right? Go for for an ambulance. Tell them there's a lady unconscious. Quick. I'll move that okay. away. What do you want me to do? Just lift that leg up Could for us. Could you sit more than me? Alright. Yeah, that's it. Let's put that up there. Alright. Right, we're going to put her in a recovery position now. Right. So we'll just pull her over. Okay. Check that she's breathing right. still. That's it, just got to so wait for the ambience now. Yeah. Oh, it's one now. Hello there. Can you hear me? Just feed the Right, okay. okay, okay. Do we know what her name is at all? No. You don't know what her name is? No. Right. Are you staying? Are you staying here? Yeah. All right. Thanks. You look like you recovered pretty quick as well. <laughs> oh, this was just a reconstruction. Oh, I hate it when people do. That's horrible. Thank you very but much it for that. Thank could you happen at any time, couldn't it? Yeah. So maybe you need some training in first aid. Right. So that's is that what I'm going to get then? Some training Great in first soul. aid. And what Steve doesn't know is that after his first aid course, he's going to be first on the scene to deal with 50 casualties at a major accident reconstruction. The first thing Steve learns is that we need to breathe to live. Breathing means taking in air from the outside into the body. And we take it in through the mouth, through the nose, and it goes down the breathing tube, down the windpipe, into the lungs. They're hidden behind these bones to protect them. If someone isn't breathing, you have to give them the kiss of life. Mm. While Steve's doing this, he's putting air into the mouth, down through your windpipe, into the lungs. And we can see it's going in because the lungs get larger and the chest rises. And it's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> When we breathe, our lungs fill with air. Our bodies need a gas called oxygen in the air to stay alive. If there's no air to breathe, we need to supply our lungs with oxygen. Underwater, this scuba diver has cylinders of compressed air on her back. In space, an astronaut needs breathing equipment too. Breathing is an essential process of human beings. Another essential process is the circulation of the blood, and that's the job of the heart. The way that we tell that your heart is actually working, that you, your heart is beating, is to take the pulse. Right. To take your pulse, we need to find where we can feel the rhythm of your heart. And you feel that at the wrist nice and easily. Go down the thumb along the bone and press that pulse point onto the bone. So uh, I'm still alive then? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> almost. <laughs> nice, healthy, strong pulse there. Oh, that's good.
The heart is a pump which propels blood around the body. The blood is pumped to the organs through delivery tubes called arteries and veins. As the heart beats, it pumps the blood to the liver, to the kidneys, to the legs and the rest of the body. The human heart beats about 70 to 80 times a minute. Leandra's heart rate is about 70. But different animals have different heart rates. A small animal's heart beats much faster. This budgie's heart rate is about 750 times a minute. And a huge python has a heart rate of only 14 beats per minute. Oh well, that's my first day finish. Start again, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Just a minute, Steve. Day's not quite over. <laughs> you what? No, if you could just come back in a minute. There's <laughs> one more thing I'd like you to do. Here we go, here we go. Is just a little there? while longer. If we can just go in here. Hello, Steve. Hello, mate. I'm Martin. Welcome. Hello, mate. I thought I was going home, actually. <laughs> We've got another challenge for you. What we want to do now is to put your first aid skills into practice. I want you to go across and think you've had a little accident. Treat her as you think you should, and I'll come across and tell you what you've done right or wrong at the end. It's only my first day! OK, there's the first aid kit. Off you go. Right. Anthony's going to see this patient. Oh, Anthony, we met earlier. I'm a member of the Guild of Casualties. It's our job to act as casualties at mock-ups of accidents so that people can practice their first aid skills. Nindy here isn't really hurt. This is artificial blood. Although the injuries must look realistic, they're all created with makeup. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. If you cut an artery, blood spurts out. It's bright red. This blood has just left the heart. The heart pumps the blood with great force, so the blood squirts out. A very serious wound. Veins carry blood back to the heart. If a vein is cut, the blood oozes out. It's dark red. This blood is returning to the heart. Veins carry a lot of blood, but it doesn't spurt because it's not under pressure. It's still a very serious wound. I've got to check. Did anybody see what happened here? Did you see what happened? No, I think the room was empty. Right, the room was empty. Uh, hello? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Vicky. Vicky? You alright, Vic? Well, you're not alright, are you? Um, I have to say it's your leg that hurts, isn't it? Yeah. This is very <laughs> unfair because if you're breathing, I know what to do with you. This is only my first day. So what we've got to do... Did you, did you fall off this ladder? Yeah. You did? OK, then I'm going to have to feel your leg so, so I can see. And you tell us where, where it hurts, okay? OK? Over here, Anthony is treating an identical injury. Let's see what we've got here. I don't know what's here. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm ready for this. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, no. That's... <laughs> ah! Um. Ah! Well, obviously, you've done something to your leg, Vicky. I think you've well and truly broken it. I think we're going to um, have to... Uh, let's have a look. Come to see what we've got. Uh, let's see uh, the bandage is coming. It's all right. Anthony's using the correct first aid procedure. This, what have you given? This is useless. This is some sterile dressing. What's the good is sterile dressing? Uh, what we're going to need to do is get you an ambulance, aren't we? Then it's probably best that I don't touch you because uh, I'm pretty sure I can only make it worse. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Steve's first aid was a bit strange, really. He was very keen to jump in the situation and do his best, but he could have done a bit more harm than he could have just by leaving it and getting an ambulance straight away. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Well, really, I think Steve should have a few more days on this first aid course, and it'll be a much better first aider by the end of the week. Now, we're going to have to use this ladder to make a stretcher. And that is it. The blood carries oxygen around the body. When the blood leaves the heart, it carries a lot of oxygen. The organs use the oxygen, so when the blood returns to the heart in the veins, it contains much less oxygen. So the blood travels to the lungs, where it collects oxygen from the air that we breathe. It then travels back to the heart, so the cycle can start all over again. That's it. I passed my course. I'm now a certified first aider. So my reward is a nice relaxing day out at a country park. But I have been told to bring that. We're preparing for a major incident reconstruction. A powerboat crashes into the ferry and it catches fire. Steve's going to come along and treat the casualties and wait for the emergency services to arrive. Virtual reality. You're standing in the real world, but your hands and eyes are operating in another, computer-generated world. So how can the technology and skills of virtual reality help in the operating theatre. These surgeons are using a technique called endoscopic surgery. Instead of cutting a patient open, the surgeon inserts a tiny camera into their body. The TV screen gives a picture of the inside of their body. Long surgical instruments are also inserted through small holes. It's a very skillful procedure. The surgeon operates by looking at the screen and controlling the instruments from outside the body. Here, the surgeon pushes away the pink lung to reveal the white heart beating away behind it. One false move could have very serious consequences. A procedure like cutting an artery requires a great deal of hand-eye coordination. A new system hopes to help surgeons develop these skills. Instead of operating on humans, you can practice your operation on a computer. The idea is to create a virtual body which looks and responds like the human body. There's a long way to go before it looks like the real thing. I'm afraid I brought 50 people with me today oh for you to treat. 50? <laughs> That's all. I don't know if I've got enough bandages on me. <laughs> for 50? Hello. Thereabouts. Hello. 
Attention. Please listen carefully to the following safety announcement. In the unlikely event of an emergency, you will be kept informed by the ship's master. This is the master of the Kielda Ferry. There has been a collision between two powerboats whilst racing. One powerboat has collided with the ferry, causing serious injuries to a number of passengers. I am transferring as many passengers as possible into the life rafts. Please alert all emergency services. He's unconscious, he's breathing. He's all right. I'm going to have to leave him. Checking the airway. Check the airway. Checking the breathing. Check the pulse. He's all right. I'm going to have to put him because I've got to have to leave him. I have to put him in the recovery position. Keep an eye. If you, if you see anybody not breathing, yeah, just shout. Okay, no, no, don't, don't do it. Do you know how to do it? Yes, I know. Well, you'll do it. Do it. <laughs> who, who, can, who can move here? <laughs> I'm, gonna have to, I'm sorry, mate, this is going to hurt. Steve, Steve. How Steve. is she? Steve. How about? I'm going to try starting to move big land there, okay? But what are you going to move them onto? Onto our scout launch there. We've got plenty of space on there. I can take around about 10 people on there. That one? Yeah, okay. This one. That one's got very, very gash down the back, bad gash down the back, suspected fracture there. How many people have we got here? One, two, three, four. We need five. Five. five right. We can get her out with five of us. Okay, let's go. Huh? Onto this channel before to try and get to all of this one, but. Uh... At last, the casualties are all evacuated to the shore. And, uh, what I'm interested in is, how did I do? Because it was my first time. And if you've got anything to say how I did, I'd like to hear from you. So, How did you find coping on the priorities? You know, you've got a lot of people screaming, a lot of people trying to drag your attention. I just wondered whether you... Because, I mean, I was totally unconscious on the floor. The man to ask about that, I suppose, would be Martin, because I don't know how I did cope, but you were around through most of it. How did I cope with priority? I think you were very good on the whole, yeah. You made your ABCs and things, went around and saw the quietest people first. The ABCs, what's that? My airways, my breathing, breathing my and circulation. circulation. Saw the first people that weren't breathing, checked on them and got people to do that. And then you went to your other injuries and checked on those. It's very good. Well... It's been an amazing day, and I'll tell you what I'm doing next Sunday. I'm staying in bed and reading the papers. <laughs> <laughs>